Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back. Well, I have two brown typewriters here. You might call them mocha brown, chocolate brown, maybe a combination of both. So on your left, I have the Optima Super. This was made in USSR occupied East Germany in the very early 1960s. And on your right, I have a Smith Corona SCM Coronet Automatic 12 made in the United States in the early 1960s. The Optima Super is a manual typewriter. The Coronet, however, is an electric typewriter, which is essentially like a manual typewriter. It has a moving carriage, it has type bars, what I call a type bar electric, but it has an electric motor that assists the operation of the keys, and also this particular version has the powered carriage return. Two very different machines, though, in terms of how they feel when you type on them. And if you were like me and you took typing class way back in the day, if you're old enough to remember typing class, and we were taught touch typing on electric typewriters, at least I was, and if you were older than me, you would might have went to typing class and learned on manual typewriters. But using a nice manual typewriter and using a type bar electric is two entirely different kind of experiences from the standpoint point of your fingers. And so the question came up in my mind, should we be using the same touch technique, the same typing technique on both machines? I guess it depends on what you're typing, but let's talk about that, so stay tuned. Well, one thing uh, that you might notice when you're using a manual typewriter is that when you are pressing the keys, there's quite a bit of key travel. It could be upwards of a centimeter and a half, maybe three quarters of an inch or more. And whereas on an electric typewriter, you have much less key travel. In the case of this typewriter, it's really about maybe five millimeters only, a uh, half a centimeter. So there's a big, huge difference in the vertical stroke distance. And one of the things that happens because of that difference is if you're careful about it, and you're typing on a manual typewriter, and if you find yourself knowing that you're hitting the wrong key, you can often pull back halfway through the stroke and not print the erroneous letter. And I've done this repeatedly, and I find it's one of the things about a snappy typer on a manual typewriter, you can kind of prevent typographical errors if you're careful about it. However, <laughs> what I've noticed with both Type bar electrics, and I have five type bar electrics plus the IBM Selectric 721. All of those electric powered typewriters, electric motor powered typewriters, even if you're conscious of you think you're in the middle of pressing the wrong letter, by the time you even think about it, you've already pressed it for two reasons. Number one, as I said, the keystroke is so much shorter, but also the force required to press the key is so much lighter. In fact, what I've noticed about these typewriters is if you're using the classic touch typing technique where your arms are kind of not really supported, right? You're not supposed to rest your forearms on the table. It's bad ergonomics, right? You don't want to bend your wrist. So you're sort of supporting the weight of your arms. With an electric typewriter, if you start to bear down on the keys just because your arms are a little fatigued or you're not paying attention, you're going to be kind of preloading those keys. And that means any slight erroneous finger movement, just adjusting your hand or whatever, some even unconscious motion of your fingers might trigger a key. And so I've noticed that I make more mistakes on Type R Electrics and the IBM Selectric than I do with manual typewriters, which is kind of counterintuitive, you would think, right? So that's interesting. So I learned to type in typing class with a touch typing technique on electric typewriters, and we were graded in terms of our words per minute. We were deducted five words per minute for every mistake that you made. And it was an interesting exercise in trying to balance your instantaneous speed at any one moment with the idea that if you made a mistake, you're going to lose a lot of that speed that you otherwise would have gained. And so I've noticed since then, in fact, just this last week when I've been writing a lot of letters on electric typewriters and also because of the recent, the last video, the uh, typewriter rodeo of electric typewriters, I've noticed that 
The same is true, right? If I just slow down a little bit more with the electric typewriters, I actually gain a lot of speed. And then this has brought me to the point of reassessing whether touch typing, the classic home row touch typing technique, for me at least, is even valid with these kinds of typewriters. Keeping in mind one huge caveat, when we were taking typing class back in the early 70s, uh, it was trying to teach us a skill that we might use not only as a student in, in school, but in the professional world. And in the professional world, a huge purpose for typing was to transcribe either other uh, typed documents or handwritten notes. And to transcribe, in fact, that's what we did with our typing class. We had an instruction book set up, maybe a Greg brand instruction book set up off to the right, and we were looking at that book, not looking at our hands, but we were touch typing, copying exercises out of the book, right? This is the real application, I think, for touch typing in a practical sense, is being able to type without looking at your fingers. However, if you make a mistake, you suffer a penalty because on both of these machines, for instance, there's no built-in correction system. You know, I use correction tabs. That's one of my common ways of doing it. Occasionally, I'll use correction tape in the roll-on cartridges, but I actually like the tabs better, especially when you're typing on off-white paper. You know, you pay a penalty. You have to stop what you're doing. You have to carefully fit the correction tab in to behind the card guide and find a place on the correction tab that's uh, not been used and then backspace your typewriter and type over the mistake, etc., etc. So you lose a lot of time. You, sl you know, and if you had just slowed down a little bit more, you wouldn't have made that mistake, especially the kind of mistakes I'm referring to that happen often with electric typewriters, which is inadvertent keystrokes because you're giving a little bit too much pressure to it. Well, this was the classic uh, touch typing technique. I'm sitting here at an angle on my desk. And, you know, it's, it's a nice quick technique and you can certainly type with this way and learn not to look at the keyboard. But again, as I said earlier, sometimes when you rest your hands a little bit sloppily on the keyboard, you might accidentally press a key because these things are super sensitive. It's only a few millimeters of touch with a very light touch and you can inadvertently strike an erroneous key. So what I kind of was doing and this is certainly not something you want to do without testing it first to see if it works for your hands. But I'll show you with just one hand because this hand's going to be in the way. I was kind of resting my palm on the corner of the typewriter. Now this is a 6 series Smith Corona so it has a fairly wide carriage or wide keyboard deck. But I was kind of just typing like this, right, with both hands instead of the classic hovering your arms above the keys without the arms being supported which then causes you maybe to sag your arms under the weight of it and then mistakenly erroneously strike a key. So I just found this kind of relaxing position. I found a position where my arms felt really comfortable, my wrists were comfortable, everything was kind of in the neutral position and I can actually type pretty quickly this way and yes I'm looking at the keys and that means I'm not going to be making any mistakes which means of course I'm not going to have to slow down to use one of these things that's what I discovered for me works good with electric typewriters. This also works good on the IBM Selectric also the body style just kind of relaxing my hands taking it easy, not trying to be a speed demon, and I can be a faster typer. You know, since we don't live in the era of typewriters being used professionally, I have to ask the question, do we really need to touch type? And in that vein, if you've noticed a lot of classic 
black and white photos of press reporters in like the stadium box seats looking over a baseball game or whatever, you'll notice the whole row of press reporters and their typewriters. And you might notice very few of them were touch typing. A lot of them were two finger hunt and peck typing. Now, why is that? They type for a living. You think they would know how to touch type. Well, I think the reason is because they had to produce error free copy very expeditiously, very quickly, and they didn't have time to retype it or to stop to make corrections because the ball game isn't going to stop for them. So they chose the most expeditious way to type, which was not touch typing. It was two finger typing typing, more accurate, a better quality imprint. Well, that's something to think about. I'll throw that out there. So drop some feedback down below there. What do you think? Do you think we should modify our typing technique for these kind of machines, electrics, IBM Selectrics, that are very sensitive on the keys? Should we make a, a better typing technique that is less error prone and also more comfortable? What do you think? Drop a note down below. I'd love to hear from you. In any event, all of this is about furthering our creativity. And so with that in mind, I wish you a great day and stay creative. Bye-bye for now.